What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Mr. Lil Chili. You know, just doing a little overview of my uh, Tamiya 801 XT. Um, it's a platform that was designed as a Truggy first, and then they designed the buggy off of the Truggy. So it's sort of reversed from how most manufacturers uh, came up with their platforms. Most of the platforms, or most of the manufacturers, they come up with a buggy first, and then design the, the Truggy based off of the buggy platform. So, to me, it did that sort of backwards, but you know, it's, it's a nice, fun kit. Um, you can still find them on eBay and everything like that. Um, they're not as uber popular as, say, like a 4.0 kit and everything. Um, but, you know, they're still out there. There's still some out there, but, you know, right now, they catch a they 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 want a high amount right now because the one thing that this has over the 4.0 kits is TLR still making buggies, you know. And as of right now, the word is they're still, you know, trying to make truggies. At least they was making one for uh, Dakota Fenn, you know. But to me, it is not making no more a scale off road. Uh, buggies or truggies so it was one generation and that was it one generation of truggy one generation of buggy that's it so these are more actually of a collector's item than the TLR products um, you know they went on a fire sale whereas though they was right in range prior to the sale with all of the TLR you know 2.0 and 3.0 kits you know six hundred dollars you know five hundred dollars some places something like that but um they went on a fire sale once they was discontinued and they was selling them like 99 dollars a piece the buggy was going for i think 149 and i bought three of the truggies and in retro and looking back i should have bought two truggies and two buggies or at least two truggies and one buggy but not not really, you know, thinking of stuff. I, I didn't get the buggy, so stuck with three truggies or now nah, I gave one away, so um got two truggies now and stuff, one brand new in box, and I got this one. So pop the lid off. So I did a couple things to this one. Um one I went with the um they have shorter arms, front and rear, and shorter axles. Um, the original came with slightly longer arms, slightly longer axles. Um, but there was a lot of uh, breakage of the arms and stuff. And I tried to manipulate Ryan Lutz setup on, um, on the truck you know years ago and stuff and i just couldn't drive it the way the way he had his setup it was like really stiff and it just slid all around like i i just i couldn't do it so one thing i'll say is when you look at team driver setups and stuff take that with a grain of salt with your driving style um i like my my back end sort of locked in you know, with, and I like my, my steering sort of numb. I don't really like it aggressive or, you know, um, I don't like a lot of, a lot of staring out the front. You know, I like to be able to, to have my back end locked in. And then when I get on the gas, be able to sort of break it free and stare, stare the car with the back. But I don't like it to be overly aggressive where it's a lot of off power, um, turning or, or off power grip in the front and none in the back, you know, and I don't like to have my grip whereas though in the back on power is still loose. I, I don't really like that. You know, I don't like that fishtailing type of thing. Um, I'm not with that, you know, but you can see a couple videos back. I talk, I tore, um, two arms up at the track and stuff, just practicing and everything, trying to run that setup. 
and um, I broke two arms, which was the longer arms and stuff, both in the front, um, both on this, I think on the same side that day. And then I just went ahead and switched to the shorter arms and um, the shorter uh, dog bones and everything to make them all fit and everything um, since then. And, you know, I, I found a little package that helps me and everything that's more to, akin to how I drive and my style of driving and stuff. You know, um, I'm at the bottom hole in the back on the tower inside a middle out on a hub um, second to the outside hole on a shock tower for the shocks and a middle hole for the rear shocks front shocks on um, second to the outside hole on the shock on the tower a middle hole on the arm middle hole on the hub for the camber link and I'm upper hole, upper inside hole for the camber link on the tower. So that gives me enough steering and it also, you know, gives me enough grip front and rear, you know, and I, and it's just more of a neutral feeling for me. Um, besides that, and I'll, I'll bring y'all in closer, you know, in a second. But I went with the blue graphite or blue carbon um, graphite radio tray piece right here, radio plate. Blue graphite steering top plate. Blue graphite center diff top plate. Blue graphite front and rear shock towers. And, of course, you know, the blue aluminum front and rear uh, braces. Um, I have it in, in the, in the box, but I haven't tried it yet, but I heard that if you go to the blue aluminum, um, front steering knuckle, it actually gives you a little bit more steering angle and stuff. I haven't tried it yet, but I got, I got the pieces over here. Um, give me one second. So these are the blue aluminum buggy steering knuckles. You know, so I got that along with actually the uh, the front C hub and everything. So that'll sit right there. And as you can see, this piece right here, the Ackerman arm, is actually shorter than this one. So I guess that's where the more more ang steering angle comes in at. But I'll try that at a later date. And just a quick update on the Reds engine and stuff. Um, I ran five tanks in through the brake in bench. Went extremely well. Um, held temp and everything. Um, I had a head warmer on it and stuff. You know, but it's it stayed running. You know, I had to bump the um the idle down a little bit because it was it was running you know pretty pretty fast um, with the initial settings and stuff. So I just bumped the idle down a little bit, the idle gap, and that brought my idle down. You know, and um, that ran pretty good. Ran five tanks through it. Um, so basically, like a, a court, maybe a tank. So, and then I put it up, but and I just haven't got a chance to get back around to it yet. But um, I'll get back on that sometime this week. So, but I just wanted to shoot a quick video and stuff. Like I said, I'll bring you in a little bit closer. So, and I got the CLS... HV 7349 Metal Gear JX servos. They say 46 kilograms or 
like what I would say, damn near 600 ounces. I think like 500 and something, you know, might as well round it up to 600. Um, but I don't, I don't think it's pulling that. I don't think it's pulling that. I could be wrong, but my Savox servos, my Protex, um, all of them, even my Power HDs, all of them seem a bit stronger. And the Savox ones are the same speed as these, but for whatever reason, the Savox ones just seem to react quicker. I don't know what that is. I don't know, but now don't get me wrong, these are not bad servos. And especially for the price, you know, I think they're like $59 a piece or something like that. You know, well under the price of the Savox and Protex and stuff, but um, I think the advertised uh, specs on them are a little bit, you know, exuberant or however they got to those specs, you know, can't be reproduced in a real world scenario. So I'll leave that as that. But you can see the um, blue graphite right there, a little bit better. Um, steering top plate. Front plate, front shock tower. Rear shock tower. That's the Argus um, 23. And uh, Argus 23A52. Um, it's got, got the tilted engine mounts on it. So it leans the engine over, you know, so many degrees towards the center line. And actually, when this truck came out, it had one of the straightest um, center, drive shaft center line uh, setups out of all of the uh, the buggies and truggies in that era. Um, a lot of buggies have, you know, the center, the output shafts on the front and rear, or at least the rear sort of offset. Whereas though these are front and rear, center of the gearbox, and they run true center down the middle of the uh the chassis and they was achieved they was able to achieve that by basically leaning the engine over so much and i guess you that's a better angle you can see the engine is tilted to the right you know so many degrees and stuff and that's to be able to get the drive shaft over top of the uh, the mountain air and everything for the uh, for the engine. So and it's, it's a pretty free drivetrain. One thing I got to do is the bushings that hold the brakes the braking in when i went to this top plate right here the hole was a little bit small for the bushing and so i i had to sort of press fit it in so because of that you know it's causing a little bit of binding you know with the uh with the brake linkage and stuff you know i don't like that so i'm gonna have to sort of pull these off go in with um with a Dremel or a drill bit, you know, and sort of hollow those out. Just, you know, give them a little bit more, uh, more, more play and stuff, make them a little bit more freer. But, um, yeah, I just wanted to shoot a quick video and I guess it wasn't even quick cause it's already at 15 minutes. But, um, you know, like I said, I changed a couple things up and everything. Cause this was black, that was black, that was black. It was blue aluminum, blue aluminum. Um, I am on the look for this silver piece right here, the output cups for uh, for both front and rear. They also have that in blue aluminum, but that's been a discontinued piece. And um, 
that's one piece I never I was ne never able to get. So I do want to try to find that, but usually, you know, it's either attached to somebody's truck or, you know, it's hard to find them in like a parts lot or just sold individually and everything. But other than that, you know, it runs pretty good and stuff. Like I say, the Argus is probably, arguably, one of my favorite engines of all time as far as eighth scale, um, eighth scale off-road goes. Um, I'm not going to say that it's the most top quality engine. I'm not going to say that it's the worst quality engine. But what I will say is this, it's a six year old engine. I've had, I bought it in 2014, um, broke it in in 2014. Um, I don't even know, it's, it's got well over, well over 10 gallons. It's around 15 gallons, I guess, through it. Um, still got plenty of pinch. Um, I can start it up cold, I can start it up warm. It starts up and it holds a tune pretty good um, I'm pretty sure it's in its peak or towards the end of its peak uh, life experience or whatever but arguably over the Nova Rossi's um, the OS's uh, I can't say nothing about reds because like I said I just got my first reds so I can't say nothing about them but OS's, Picos, Nova Rossi's, um, anything based off of those engines. Um, yeah, I, I got to say this runs right at the top with all of them. Um, for me, you know, like I said, it, it hasn't given me any issues. And uh, I'm running it with the Argus TB01 pipe. Um, if you see, it's got the removable stinger. So I got, uh, I got the 7.5 on here now. There's a 7 point and an 8.0. So there's 7 millimeter and an 8 millimeter also I can switch to. And I got an 8 millimeter Venturi in there and it does what it, what I needed to do. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to shoot this quick video and stuff, you know little quick overview of my Tamiya 801 XT. Um, I hope if anybody else has one, you know, I hope to see some people bring theirs out, you know, and um, show theirs off a little bit and stuff, you know, whether they driving it or just going around it and everything. But um, appreciate everybody, you know, for all the fathers out there. Hope everybody had a happy Father's Day and stuff. You know, and with that, I'll see y'all on the next one.